Anyway, move on from that one. Um, podcast cringe, Bert Kreischer. Let's see. Let's see what I'll go on to my guy, Podcast Cringe. Big up the Podcast Cringe gang. Du, 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 du. Let's go. Come on, bro. Can you load for me? Yeah, there you go. You can load for me. You can load for me. You can be the one for me. Don't be stupid now. Can you load for me? Yes, Man. You can load for me. I would love to have been able to deliver what hip hop delivers spiritually to a person. I think you do. I don't think I do. I what? think you do. I think you do. I'm not saying all comedians, but Bert, you touch people in a different way. My like, name's. Don't he pay you? Honestly, I want to get to a point in my content career where I can pay somebody to be my co host sit across from me and just suck me off validate everything i'm saying uh-huh yeah man oh my god you're so smart what no way i go oh my god az yeah man whoa shit no way bro the way your brain thinks i would love that man that'd be so good it'd be so it'd make you feel so awesome right someone just there just making you feel like you know you're walking on water like, I'd love that, bro. Oh, my God, AZ, man. I never thought about that, dude. Whoa. It's Bert, and I like to squirt. Yeah, I don't exactly. wear a shirt. Oh, man. These videos just edit themselves now. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Shout out to anyone here for the first time because you're in for a treat today. I was halfway through the latest episode of Two Beards on a Stage, and I had an Andrew Schultz epiphany realizing for the first time that Burt Kreischer and DJ Khaled are spirit siblings. Why didn't anyone tell me? I want the house on the water. I want the nice car. I want the nice watch. I want to stay fresh. I want to stay clean. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's, you should strive for greatness. How did you gain all the weight? Seriously, prove me wrong. So anyway, more on that a little later, but on this episode... R.I.P. Larry King, the fucking go. R.I.P. Larry King. So Bert was alone to do all the work himself while Tom Segura was off flying helicopters or something, and his guest was DJ turned rapper turned radio host turned stand-up comedian. Basically, he Brendan Schaubed his way into comedy, and it didn't take long for him to question his decisions. I'm not going to lie, that might be one of the worst paths to stand up i've ever seen because it sounds like you're just failing at all the other things and then you finally stumbled on fucking stand-up i couldn't imagine it personally no no thank you i i asked to be here yeah um, <laughs> so like i said cypher sounds made the transition to stand-up around 15 years ago and this is how it went down so were you always funny with when all the rappers were around were you always funny always bro i, I didn't know Chappelle, I was a DJ on the Chappelle show. Yeah. So Chappelle is the one who told me I should do stand up. For real? Yeah, because we would go around with the audience while we were warming up and I'd like play a song and he would like make fun of it or something. And I, and he was always said I had the timing. But I at the 2002, I was like, the furthest thing from my mind was being a comic. Yeah. And he's like, yo, you, you should do stand up. Think about doing it. And I was like, shut the f. So I got Chappelle, I have a rule. If you hear something from three people, it's something you should explore, right? Yeah. So, so. <laughs> I have a rule, you know. These guys, bro, most people are just like working a job just to feed their family, keep a roof over their head, go on their one or two vacations a year, have something nice, buy something nice for themselves, take out their partner for a meal, watch the game, play some video, just modest, easy things to do while you're here and whilst you have the time that you have these guys are in heady land free idea free ideas bro so Chappelle said it to me once and then i was on mtv jamie fox said to i used to host a rap show on mtv but then i would sometimes fill in on trl yeah so on trl i would be like with big guests like superstars jamie fox turned to me he goes yo you're funny and I just being normal, like I, what I call it, road trip funny. You know, yeah. when you're with your boys and you just throwing them, and you you got that laughter for an hour. Yeah, I call sleepaway camp. Yeah, funny. sleepaway camp. Yeah, where you when everyone's at sleepaway camp and you joke 
What the fuck is he wearing? Is there? I was I, I was seeing right. I don't know if you guys have seen that clip of um, unfortunately Sexy Red's sex tape on fucking um, Twitter and shit. But some dude that Sexy Red was fucking decided to upload a video of him fucking Sexy Red on social media. And he was really, you know, proud of it. And I'm thinking to myself, being a male groupie is so much worse than being a female woman groupie, right? It just looks worse on men. Like, being a groupie and being proud of it. Like, it's just gross. Like, Sexy Red, you know, agree to fuck you. That's a win in itself. But here you are recording it and then uploading it. Onto, it's like, it's just just nasty. It doesn't, it doesn't hit the same when men do it. And I think there's something to be said for attention seekers. Being an adult male attention seeker is really yucky on a man. It just looks odd, you know? Like being a grown man and being an attention seeker. Like, because Bert's life, his existence is wanting all the attention. He legit is the personification of a guy that wants to suck all the air out of the room. He wants all the attention on him at all times. He's always performing. He's always shucking and jiving, always fucking dancing, always performing in some way, shape or form. And for an adult male, it's just weird. It just looks odd. And he's a dad. And he's in his 50s. It's like, let's relax. Cannot end. Yeah. And you, everyone's awake and you're still you going. Killing. So is that. So he said I was funny. And then Will Smith said I was funny. And then people would always say I was funny on the radio. Now, now I used to just be a DJ. Then, then I became a radio personality. So people would always say, you're funny on the radio. You're funny on the radio. So I was like, I should try to like, maybe I'll just produce a comedy show. Make money because people think I'm funny. So I just started producing a show and I get one laugh, two laughs. Oh, this is how it works. And then just it just took off from there. And what year is that? 2008? Oh, really? Yeah, 08. I don't know if you guys are familiar with his style, but it's actually kind of chill. He's definitely got the rhythm and the pace for stand-up, which probably comes from hip-hop and rapping. But like most people who Brendan Schaub their way into comedy, they're just not inherently funny. Joe Rogan's kind of the same. They all have this try-hard vibe where they spend their whole set trying to convince us that they're funny. But yeah, I gotta say, Cypher's definitely got the skills to be a stand-up. I think he could get really big in the stand-up community if he had someone else writing his material. That's just what I think though, so feel free to disagree. And so with hip-hop as the background to this conversation, Bert insisted on inserting himself into hip-hop culture in his usual style. It's the... I don't know why, but it just happened to me routine that we're used to by now. I feel like every Florida rapper I get along with really well. I ran into Uncle 100%. Luke one night and fucking lost my shit. I was I was eating dinner with Gloria Stefan's husband. Love it. And, Emilio? Yeah, and we were having uh we we're having uh uh what's the what's the Latin uh Latino dish with all the seafood? Uh paella. paella. We're having paella yeah. and Uncle Luke walked by. And I was and I was like Uncle Luke, and he was like, "What's up?" And came over, and I was like, "Dude!" And then he was, "I'm with Stefan," so he's like, "Oh, hey!" So yeah, we thought yeah, I was yeah. someone, but right, uh, right. and then he was like, <laughs> "He does not miss a chance of name drop, does he?" Fucking. Hell. And then I was like, and then he realized I'm obviously someone. Got to get that name drop in there, huh? So then Bert tries to buy favor with Cypher by listing off all the Florida rappers that he's parted with, and that's where we get to DJ Khaled. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help it. Trick Daddy, if me and him hung out, yeah, we get along so 100%. well. Hundred percent. Like, there's some about Florida rappers that like Flo Rida, even like, Khaled. You ever hung out with Khaled? No, I haven't. But I think we'd. I love to play golf with him. You would one hundred percent vibe. Khaled. Khaled was was so like there was a guy named DJ Laz out of Tan, mm -hmm. out of Miami, Miami that yeah. I knew, mm -hmm. and then Khaled was the same way. They were like just DJs in. Yeah. In in the scene, but we're you have to really care about celebrities and shit to listen to this part of it, because after a certain point, all of Bert's stories are the same. I'm sure you've probably, if you're a Bert fan, you've definitely heard him talk about these people before. So you have to really be either a big fan of his or just like hearing the same story. 
because it gives you some level of comfort or something. I don't know because this is excruciating, and this is a fucking, you know, a simp, uh, a synthesized version of it from podcast cringe of the full episode, right? Jesus Christ! Even the clip is is a lot to get through. Making beats too. Yeah, is that what you were doing? Yeah, I sucked. Up. My beats sucked. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, all I wanted to do was make beats, and they were terrible. Really? I had to find another angle. And that's where the idea dawned on me that Burt Kreischer is the DJ Khaled of comedy. Think about it. They both leech off other artists. Their contribution to their genre can be summed up in one or two phrases or stories. They appeal to teenage boys and man children who can't let go of their college years, and they both have the same body type. They're basically the same person. Very true. But Bert didn't stop there. Like he usually does, he had to put himself front and center of the hip hop genre and tell a story that probably never happened to prove that he's an OG. Remember, Bert can do anything he puts his mind to. After hanging out with Tom Segura for so long, he's changed his attitude from being a loser to adopting Tom's winning ways. Man, I remember Whatever when Tupac was, was shot. Yeah. It came out on MTV News. I was at my sister's house in Tampa, and I just, I think I had just graduated college, or I was about to leave to go to New York, maybe. Yeah. Or was, no, he got, no, I was, no, was, I was 90, still in college. I was still in college. Yeah. And, uh, he was we, killed in 96. Yeah. And we smoked, a, a, we took hits and listened to Tupac the entire day. I had khakis on. But was that the first time you ever did that? No. No, you've oh, done no. it before. Can I tell you, you want to talk about my depth of cultural oh. appropriation? Yeah. When uh, All Eyes on Me came out, uh -huh. I dressed and exactly like he did in the album in the, and with like khakis and chucks and a wife beater. And then I covered myself in the same tattoos. I got highest. I thought he said then I covered myself in black paint. <laughs> I thought he was going to say then I covered myself in black paint just like Justin Trudeau. That one, second, third, fourth, fifth time. <laughs> and we wrote. With, with, with Magic like Marker. Marker? Yeah. Uh -huh. And then we went out partying our d off to the best album I'd ever heard. Yeah. I loved that. And then I only wore my do-rags the way he wore his, in that Aunt Jemima style. Oh, of course you did. Course <laughs> my whole life. I've never worn a do-rag any way other than that. Of course. I was such a fan of Tupac. I can't tell you. <laughs> oh, he dude. spoke to me. And like, and I have nothing. We have no. Wait, bandanas. We, yeah, bandanas. That's not a do-rag. Bandana and do-rag are same thing. No, yeah, Bert. <laughs> yeah, for white people, not for, oh, okay. for you guys. Like we don't try, we don't use them to do our hair. You don't, you don't, you you don't get a do-rag and get your wave spinning. No, no. Oh, okay. So Cipher was clearly like, "Bro, what are you talking about?" And then just went with it when he realized Bert was leaning into it. Mm. But then Bert sent one of his minions downstairs to fetch him a bandana so he could prove just how gangster he used to be. And just a word of warning. Don't drink anything for the next 30 seconds because you'll probably spit it out. Well, what's happening? It's putting on my my do-rag. This is how I used to do it. it. You cover the whole head? Yeah. Pac did that? This is what Pac did. Wait, hold on. And then you got to tuck it in here. Right. Oh, it cut tucked down, yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Do I look good? It's really good. It's a good look. Yeah, I'll keep it like this. And then yeah. if I was real gangster, right? Yeah. Is he not embarrassed? He actually looks a bit proud of himself. Look, black guy. Look, brown guy. Look, brown guy. Look at me. I'm just like you guys and the blacks. Hippity hoppity hoppity, niggity noggity naggity. Huh? Get it? <sighs> no wonder his fucking kids were embarrassed when they went to that fucking Metallica concert with him, man. Can you imagine him? Like, rock on! Huh? Like, doing all this nonsense shit. And the, the kids are looking like, Dad, please, man. Please, Dad. Please. Just turn it down for one day. He's probably like, turn down for what? <laughs> yeah yeah good thing you, i'm glad i came here <laughs> oh man that's cringe he really leaned into that one huh and then finally we move into this really weird conversation about the spirit of hip-hop versus stand-up comedy 
man, I just don't understand why stand-up comics have to relate everything back, back to stand-up, stand-up comedy exactly. and intellectualize it to make it sound as if being a comic is like some unicorn achievement. But the, to be honest, everyone does that. I think even DJs in my little scene do that too. Relate everything back to DJing, relate everything back to clubs, relate everything back to groups of people congregating. <laughs> Like, it's fucking nonsense, bro. You're just pressing play and stop on tunes you didn't make. Relax. We get it. You think you're awesome. Your friends think you're awesome. But man, isn't it enough just to be a funny guy? Why does it have to always become some unattainable status only available to a select few? According to Rogan, it's only a thousand people. And Bert thinks he's one of them. I would love to have been able to deliver what hip hop delivers spiritually to a person. I think you do. I don't think I do. I think you do. I think you do. I'm not saying all comedians. But Bert, you touch people in a different way. Thank you. I think you do. What, um... Bro, a lot of people that come to your shows aren't necessarily hardcore comedy fans. Really? A lot of them are. I think, you know what's so funny is... That's still on. (laughs) Okay, how do we turn that off? Are you using that for making sushi? Oh, that's no, no, for loading cars. Uh, yeah, I get, I, I get a weird crossover of like, I like sometimes I'll say to people, "Who do you like?" and then they'll name people that were on that show, and they're like, "Oh, my favorite's uh, Sh- Shane Gillis." I go, "Who else do you know?" and they're like, "You." Yeah. And I go, "You just know me and Shane Gillis," and they're like, "Mark Norman." I go, "He was on the show too." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you do touch people in a way you don't realize. Really? Yeah. Well, thank you because you. I'm the the funny thing is I think there's probably it doesn't matter man these guys are fucking exhausting I gotta find some new topics to talk about because these guys just they bore me to fucking death man big up podcast cringe but these guys bore me to death like oh you have this thing about you with like uh whatever comedy shows all that is a given that's all we all do right we're yeah. all trying to get up on stage but you tapped into something that's i don't think ever been touched before oh, take that maybe like a, i don't know <laughs> maybe D- andrew dice clay or something or oh these are great compliments you know what i mean yeah I isolate they, these and put them in my well you my probably funeral. don't realize it because you're living every day you don't look at yourself i do not I do, i'm not very introspective yeah because <laughs> we know don't worry i live a very unexamined life at times yeah okay wow hang on a second Bert Crusher lives one of the most examined lives on the internet. He makes everything he's involved in about himself. His That's podcasts have all point. turned That's a very good point to be fair. turned into therapy session where he airs every little detail about his life so they can analyze it and discuss it live on air. That has to be the single most unaware thing I've ever heard come out of his mouth. It actually frustrates me how delusional he is at this point. I told you guys at the beginning, I don't have to dig that deep to find all this stuff. It just jumps out at you if you listen to every episode. And all that spiritual stuff about hip hop and stand up comedy. I know Cypher was just trying to be nice and gas him up, but there is absolutely no comparison between good music and stand up comedy. Exactly, exactly. Like, not even close. Exactly. Music like Sex, Money, and Power is one of the only universal languages in existence. To say that Bert Kreischer, of all people, provides a spiritual connection to his audience in the same way as Tupac or Nas is borderline blasphemous. Mm -hmm. Look, at the end of the day, they're just talking smack, and I think it's pretty funny, to be honest. But man, what are these guys talking about? It's a really good analysis, to be fair. I never saw the correlation between DJ Khaled and Bert Kreischer until now, but this definitely makes a lot of sense, how they act, how they speak about each other. But I still think... Bert is more insufferable than DJ Khaled. Honestly, I wouldn't actually mind hanging out with DJ Khaled. Going out with him one day in Miami, you could playing golf with him or something, going to eat at a restaurant. Like, he'd be actually good vibes. You know what I mean? He'd probably be quite fun to talk to in person and hang out with. But Bert is just... What what you see with Bert on pods, what you'd see with him in person. He It, would, it must be exhausting to be with Bert in real life. I could never imagine it. But I'd definitely take... Um, DJ Khaled over Bert any time, any day of the 